the key to the success of Phantom to me is that the original collaboration of the brilliant artists that, that undertook this, Harold Prince, Andrew Lloyd Webber, Cameron McIntosh, Gillian Lynn, Maria Bjornsson, that collaboration somehow clicked so wonderfully and they all were able to operate at the top of their form in that moment when they put that show together so that the audience reaps the benefit of that. I reap the benefit of it also because I get to play in it. But the audience is the one who really reaps the benefit of it because they get to go see a piece of live theater that is right on the money. I watched it the other day. I, I, I watched it twice now because I watched it in New York before I left and I watched it here when I came. It's a treasure. It's a, like a, a jewel, you know, and it's so beautiful and beautifully done that uh, you just sit back and uh, let it wash over you. It takes you on a ride and it doesn't let you off the ride till the end. That show just, it does it. <laughs> the only way to do it and enjoy it and make it satisfying to me and uh, also to the audience is that it must be fresh. That's what they say, acting 101, you know, that's the idea. You're supposed to walk out on stage and then have that be happening right then at that moment not accounting for what's happened to me during that day or how I feel or if I'm exhausted or if I'm feeling great still I have to all of a sudden become Monsieur Andre and have Monsieur Andre be living in that moment if I can if I possibly can working on that each night is what makes it interesting the audience is new the actors on the stage are new because they're the cast changes in subtle ways during the week you know and uh, you must keep your concentration, you know, you must keep your concentration on that that you're working on and on the moment in the play that you're working on. So I work on that each night and that has been able to keep me fresh, or as fresh as possible, as fresh as I can be. I don't know how many Christines, I think the count of phantoms, uh, how many phantoms there have been in, in, in the show since I've been in it. I think it's in the 20s. But I'm not positive. I, I did know long about the time that we became the longest running show in, the, in Broadway history. I believe it was like 20 or 21 at that time. But the phantoms, they stay around a while and we just had a really wonderful phantom named Howard McGillan, who was there for some years and had been there before. Wonderful phantom. And and now we have John Cudia and he has he's great, great phantom and strong and wonderful, passionate. It's a telling role on the phantom. It's a telling role in many ways, physically and emotionally. So I would imagine it's difficult to do it eight shows a week. Are there any phantoms that stick out in my mind uh, and Christine's? Uh, yes, well, I'll tell you, uh, Sierra Bogus sticks out in my mind as a Christine. She's a wonderful Christine. I didn't see her in Las Vegas, but I just saw her in the other show, Love Never Dies, and so she's a wonderful Christine, but uh, we've had wonderful Christines in our time we have great Christines right now in New York that I really love. Marnie Robb and Jennifer Wills, they're great. But I do have a favorite phantom, and I've had quite a few phantoms that I've really loved. But Michael Crawford is my favorite phantom, and that really has to do with the fact, I think, the part was built on him and for him, and he took a hold of it and made it his own and he's a very interesting and strange character. You wouldn't think from his prior work that he would be this kind of a gothic romantic figure and yet he's, it was a perfect fit. And so his interesting strangeness and the interesting voice that he has, um, I 
think all came together to make him a, a real phantom that I'm, I'm particularly fond of.